Hello everybody, this is Volen in Pursuit of Art. I want to talk to you today about art fundamentals. I want to try and save you some time. If you're a self-taught artist like myself, you already realize what your biggest problem is. And that is, there's just too many things to learn. You don't know where to start, you don't know where it ends, you don't know when you're ready, and you definitely don't know what to do next. So, I want to try and just give you what I've found out for myself over the last 3-4 years try and hopefully maybe take a few months off or maybe even a year off your learning curve. If you're a student somewhere, don't be scared, but two or three years probably won't be enough to prepare you for everything you need to do. Art is a huge, vast field. If you think of art as the whole visual world and even the things that you can't see, I mean, what more is there? So let's look at these things that are underlying everything and will hopefully help you on your journey. So this is the traditional textbook list of art fundamentals. They say it's line, shape, color, value, texture, and form. And that's great. But I think that if you separate the elements, you don't really get a good picture of the whole. And another idea just by looking at the list is that some of these are three-dimensional and some are two-dimensional. And it really makes no sense to combine them together. Also, line is something of an idea. Most of the time, if you're trying to do realistic art, there is no line at all. So let's have an actual look at the underlying things that these elements are part of, and what I think are the actual art fundamentals. So everything starts with perception, with our visual system. We're just going to try to understand what makes us see anything, and then knowing that, we're going to try to deconstruct that process and then use it in order to construct things that other people can see. Geometry and light are the two foundations for constructing any object, whether it's imaginary or it actually exists. These are the two things that define any surface. Geometry is not a very nice word. I know I definitely don't like it. Sometimes I still wake up thinking that I haven't graduated high school because I failed my geometry class. But you can think of geometry as just volume or form. Anything takes up some amount of space. Everything has volume. Everything has a shape. So this is what the geometry part is. Geometry basically defines the volume of an object. And once that volume is defined, when this object is lit, that's when it becomes visible. We use geometry as something of an idea. When we draw, we draw lines. Here we go. We draw lines, we try to define an idea, we try to define a shape. And once that shape is defined, then we light it by shading. We light that shape and then we make it visible to others. So geometry in the way that we use it is almost invisible in the end product. In the end what people can see is only the light as it affects the geometry. The lines that we use they're gonna disappear. Let's have a look at this geometry thing now. Basically geometry is defined by perspective. Perspective is the science of geometry as it appears in space. All that means is that any geometric form, let's have a square, any geometric form we know what it looks like we know what a square or a circle or a triangle looks like when we look at it head-on the problem is that when something is in space as something moves away or towards us it changes its shape and fortunately for us people have figured all that out and it's by now a science so we don't need to discover anything we just need to understand it that objects as they look when they recede in space when they are in space look different to when we have them as flat objects so this is a square as it might appear to you if you're looking at it straight on this could be a square it looks more like a rectangle at the moment so this could be the side of a building as you were looking at it down the street this is the geometry of the side of the building combine this with light and you've constructed a building so geometry and light really they go hand in hand and if I just move this down now the primary expression of the geometry is perspective and the primary expression of light how we make light visible is we use value and color and both of these really are the property of light again this gives form to geometry so this makes it visible let's actually have a look at that so this is basically the geometry we're interested in we're interested in simple forms because we can use these and we can combine them to construct a lot of very elaborate forms we're gonna take a look at that in just a minute so you see the lines here these forms have been defined in a 3d program so they have lines and they have value you can see all the sections of every object so you can see this is the geometry 
that defines the shape. And then once the light is there, we can remove the lines and we can only see the surfaces. So these are the primary shapes we're looking for. We need the cube because almost any architecture is constructed from cubes. We need the cylinder. We don't really need the cone as much. But since it's one of the traditional ones, we're going to keep it. And we also need the sphere. So if we just take a look at these over here, this is what the objects would look like if they were real. We have a geometry that's already been generated. As you can see, um, these objects take up space. You can see that because of the shadow. You can see it because of where they sit. They take up space in the world. And then when a light source is applied to them, when they're lit, how the geometry is described by the light. So if you were to just look at this, if you had no understanding of art, you would still understand it. So art is almost like a universal language that everyone understands, but not everyone necessarily speaks. So your job as an artist is to understand how this language works, so then you can apply the rules of it. So this is what the geometry of the scene would look like. The geometry meaning the volumes and just the idea behind the surfaces. This is what the geometry would look like. And if we add the light now, Now we have defined objects, we have surfaces now. And now we can get rid of all the lines. And we're left with just the scene. And this is how it works. Let's close these. The primary expression of geometry, what we use, the tool that we use to define geometry and perspective is lines. This is the primary tool. We use lines to define geometry. They're an abstraction. They're something that doesn't really exist. We use these as a way to explore ideas. So we would use something like this to define an object, whatever that might be. We define an object, but in the end, we don't keep those lines. It, they have no part of the final artwork. The final artwork is defined by tones and shading. So the primary tool to express light is values and shading. Values and shading make surfaces visible. Again, lines are just an idea. They're not there. Value and color are the final product of our painting. So value is enough to communicate form. So let's take a look at some examples. Almost any architecture is really just a combination of boxes mostly. If you look at this, this structure, all this is is just if we cut this, then we have a prism, which is just like a stretched cube. So we have a cube and it's been extended a little bit, we get a prism. Then from here, we just have an angular extension. So really, architecture is mostly just angular construction. So if you understand how angular constructions, which basically means just cubes, if you understand how cubes work in perspective, you'll be able to draw almost any architecture. As you can see, big box, sloped angular surface, which is half a triangle, Another box, another box, another box, 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 and even the car is a box, and this is a box, another one, and another one extending off the screen, which basically means there's an infinite amount of boxes before this shot and after that shot. Boxes are everywhere. If we get rid of the house, what we have so far, as you can see, the sides of the house, we can then use this geometry to generate light, and once we have that, we have the scene. Let's have a look at another one. More ancient architecture basically combines um, angular forms again, another angular form, and a common recurring theme is to have an angular shape again combined with a curved shape. So this is the top of a circle, which in perspective would be an ellipse, along with a rectangle. Let's have a look at the next thing, another street, same thing again, boxes everywhere, boxes only, nothing but boxes, and people because people make boxes. Next type of box is slightly more complicated box which basically is a cube with one of its edges trimmed off and this is pretty much the basis of almost any car, a lot of vehicles, um, pretty much new technology reflects um, new ways of manufacturing materials so this shape is very important for any type of new technology that you want to show. So if you're interested in design and things like that, this type of box is the basis of new technology. More boxes. More boxes. Let's have a look at the rounded box now. As you can see, the car could be a regular box if the sides were 90 degrees. And the only thing that happens to it is that it's curved. So the sides are sliced off. 
and you have the geometry of a car. Let's move on. This applies to people as well. So it doesn't really matter what it is, and this is why we're exploring these as the fundamentals. Is because whether it's a person, a mountain, a mouse, or whatever it is that you want to draw, as long as it has form, or even if it doesn't have form, as long as you understand the principles, you can draw it. So this is a very powerful way to think about art, because you can actually draw things that don't exist. So this frees up your imagination and lets you explore a lot more than you can see. Geometry. So you can think of this as a cylinder with a little sphere on the end and another sphere over here and another half a sphere. This could be a cone, I guess. But everything is geometry. And geometry follows the same rules when light is applied. Light always interacts with geometry in the same way. Which, by the way, I should say now, and I should have said earlier, um, this is going to be a series of videos. So this is only just going to explore the fundamentals. We are going to go back and actually have some more videos of how to practice and get better at these. Quickly just jumped ahead to show some more spherical forms um, in architecture, because we only saw rectangular ones. Uh, this one is basically just an elongated sphere. It could almost be, it's not exactly a cone, it's almost a sphere with one end just stretched out a bit. Straight forms again, straight forms everywhere, angular forms plus a bit of curvature. Now, again, this is a cylinder now. So a cylinder with a sphere sitting over the top of it. Here, again, a cylinder with a sphere sitting over the top of it. And another one, final one. Another cylinder, another cylinder with another half a cone or another sort of sphere cone thing combination on top and a big old cylinder so even the most basic shape without almost anything no modification is still as you can see an object that you can find in the world in any kind of environment so this could be a tiny little marshmallow or it could be this huge industrial pipe thing let's have a quick look now at some value and color let's look at the basis of those so value is enough to communicate form once we have our idea of geometry and then we start shading if we just use black and white that's really enough to convey the idea of the object but color adds an extra layer of meaning and I'll show you what I mean if you look at this you have a pretty good idea of what it is you can see that these are some ellipses so they're tiny flat little cylinders and then another cylinder going in here. So you can easily, even if you don't know anything about drawing, you can easily make sense of the forms. So really, meaning of the form is communicated to you. But what color does is that it gives you an extra layer of meaning. So you, as the artist, you have this extra step that you can take and get even more from your expression. So just look at this, and let's add the color to it. Now what does the color tell us? When we just look at this, we can't really tell where the object is, so it could be sitting anywhere. I've deliberately taken the photo cropped, so you can't really tell where it is. But the moment we add the color, you can really use the clues that are given in the color itself to find out that the object is outside somewhere. You can see that there's a lot of blue, which comes directly from the sky, and then there's also this yellow, which I think that's a house over here, the actual sun is coming over here, but there's some warmth over here too. So you can see by the warmth and the coolness, you can actually discern from that that the object is outside because of the way that it's lit. Another um, giveaway also are the hard shadows, of course, and the specular highlights, which if you're outside, the sun is always going to produce a hard edge shadow. And if we just zoom out, we can easily see now with even more clues that it's outside when we add some foliage and stuff like that. So basically, value is enough for you to be able to communicate the essence of a form this is enough but when you add the color then you can add an extra layer of meaning and color can either have emotional implications because of the way our nervous system has evolved uh, certain colors came to mean certain things to us and we still on a visceral level sort of associate with them um, or potentially sometimes you might not want to have color precisely because it might be too much information you might have a point that you want to make and it's enough for you to just show it in black and white 
and that's why black and white photography and art, monochrome art, could be sometimes so powerful. And here's an image to illustrate that. It's by Nick Brand. But you can see, you don't really need color to communicate what the artist wants to say here, which his book is all about the connection between animals and the environment and people and this whole world that we're part of. So you might want to remove the color sometimes. It might not be necessary. That's a decision that's up to you. Going back again to our main list, and let's reveal some more of it now. I should say that there are two ways of drawing when you're drawing, when you're generating geometry. So I keep talking about generating geometry, but you don't actually need to generate anything. If you're interested in doing portrait, portraits, let's say, or doing still lives, or just basically visually drawing, meaning just drawing what you can observe, then most of the time just a simple outline is enough. The method of just looking at alignments and trying to see which part of an object aligns to another part of it. So just basically generating an outline like this one. This is enough to be able to reproduce an object as it appears. So if this is the final, if this is the object of the study, and these are the steps of the study, this is how we would start. We would just have a background and then we would try to generate an outline based on where things align. So I would look at this cheekbone and I would see where it aligns on the collar. I would look at the relationships of forms. So cheekbone aligns with the collar and then the ear let's say aligns with this bump of the shoulder and then this is the outermost edge of the drawing. So if we look at these on the outline that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to look at these alignments and we're going to try to reproduce them. So cheekbone is over here. We're going to look at proportions. We're going to start measuring. We're going to have the third of the face, the thirds of the face. We're going to do all the things that we normally do when we try to draw. We're going to measure things. We're going to compare width to height. We're going to see how many times the width fits into the height of the object. We're going to try to get everything correct graphically which basically means we're just gonna look at the shapes and try to reproduce them so when we go and when we start adding light which we can also call coloring in this context we would simply start and we would try to reproduce the shapes that we see so we would reproduce this shape we would reproduce this shape to duplicate the shadows we would reproduce this shape to put the lips in place we would reproduce the shadow shapes and the light shapes and this is how we'll generate our final painting this is the 2d method of drawing now there's also another way of drawing and this is the 3d method and it's the way of understanding the underlying geometry and this is basically using perspective constructions so these objects now using this method we can actually construct things without needing to have the actual things either exist or in front of us so this car uh, this was done can remember, I think without reference or I might have just been looking at a car as I was doing it but this was constructed and not copied so this is a method of basically defining boxes in perspective and then adding shapes to the boxes or subtracting shapes to the boxes so if you would imagine the car as one big box and then another smaller box on top of it this box is basically just missing its front corner and this is where the windshield comes from so if you understand this, and I promise you it doesn't take too much to understand, and I will make more videos about how to actually learn that stuff, this now frees you up to be able to draw or paint from imagination, as long as you understand the geometry and also the light. And the light also has a few more steps. Once the geometry is generated and defined, once we've decided on our values and colors and everything else, we need to also think about materials. And we also need to consider lighting. Where is the light coming from? What's the light source? Are there different colors of lights? This is what generates a lot of the complexity of light interactions in the world, is that there most often are different color light sources. For instance, um, especially visible during sunrise or sunset, and I'm just looking for a picture while I'm talking, is you can see a very strong interaction of warm and cool colors. So the sun in this picture was behind over here on the left. So the sun is on the left, far off, and then everything else is just skylight. So skylight is present as all time at all times. Sunlight is also, 
but it just happens to be more colored at this time of day so it makes it even more prominent that there is a distinct color difference that's pretty much um, affecting everything you can see in the outside world at all times what's important about this is that basically colored light alters the color of objects so all the all three of these cars are actually neutral this car is black this car is gray and this car is gray but if you look at them you'll actually see that there are really no points anywhere where the car is its actual color it's colored completely by the light that it's been lit with so if we just take a reading from the car and the areas that are not lit by the sun you can see that they are very cool they're blue where the actual color of the car is this it's gray but it's being lit with the blue light so it turns blue over here we can see where it's lit by the sun it's very warm it's orange same thing with this car same thing with the black van it's just gonna be a darker value so if we explore again our idea of fundamentals and think of these as boxes again and then these boxes defined by lines are then lit by two different light sources which is what happens outside we have the sun over on this side and then we have the sky coming from everywhere else pretty much globally if we have these lines and then we have this light applied to those lines we're gonna end up with this scene so this is why I think these are the fundamentals it's not line shape form texture and material because this doesn't really explain to you what happens and why it happens thinking of shape here really doesn't help you understand why things look the way they do thinking in terms of geometry and light does help you to understand this scenario so thinking of geometry okay what what are the surfaces that are defined here what is the geometry of these surfaces if you think of it this way then obviously you have this side of a box and then you have this side of a box okay then what are the light sources that are being applied to my object well we have the light coming from the top from the global illumination pretty much from everywhere we have this light which is blue and then we have another light which is orange coming from this side so if we think in terms of surfaces and the direction of light and how it interacts with the surfaces we can then try and reproduce our own scenes where if you think in terms of texture shape and line you're not actually able to generate any object you can you can generate lines and, and shapes and stuff so you can make like a kidney bean shape Hold on you make like a kidney bean shape and then you can make another type of shape and yes these are both line and shape but this doesn't really help you think of okay how am I gonna shade this or why do I even shade it at all why do I do that thinking in terms of geometry and light does help you think I think better about how to approach any scene let's have a few more quick examples and I hope to keep this short guys but okay so here we have another one another just this is called a Cornell box by the way Cornell is C-O-R-N-E-L-L -L. so if you look this up there's a lot of different types of these and I'll just show you a few different ones which basically these are 3D models that people use to see what materials would look like when they're lit so it's like a light setup test thingy but you can use the, these ones to just see the effects that um, colors have upon each other so if you look at this this is gonna be a matte neutral color box but as you can see none of it really is neutral color you have all this blue coming in from this light from this side which is basically light coming from here bouncing off of this wall hitting this wall everywhere just illuminating it fully in blue and then you have this wall illuminating and it, this one as you can see is further away from the cube so not as much light as the blue coming from here gets to this side then you have the yellow over here and then you even have some green which this green forms by the blue of this wall hitting the yellow of this cube and then this jumps on over here wow again thinking in terms of line and shape won't help you but thinking in terms of geometry okay this is a surface this is a surface this is a surface and again more surfaces over here there are distances between these surfaces and there is a light source what happens well it might be hard for you to guess but look at enough reference try this enough times and you will be able to guess and you'll be able to do things from your imagination another scenario this time this is a chrome ball and this is a glass ball and you can see the different things that happen here really explore these look at as many different things as you can as long as you think in terms of geometry and light you'll be able to understand things better 
And even if you don't understand even where to start from, just knowing about perspective and knowing that you need to look at light, that narrows your scope to learning so much more than if you had just started and looked at all these abstract concepts that are offered in books that really give you very little practical application if you don't understand the physics of what's going on underneath everything. I know this video doesn't explain everything. It's impossible to put it in a video that's less than, what, 50 hours long. So let's recap and look at everything one more time. Everything starts with perception, with how we see the world. We see the world by the combination of geometry and light. Geometry is basically the volume or form that shapes take in the world or shapes that we generate basically the volume of anything and light is what makes that volume visible the interaction between the two give us our art fundamentals which basically means this empowers us to understand the building blocks of our visual system and thus be able to produce our own shapes or just understand what we see better so then we can make better decisions about how to represent it perspective and geometry are represented by lines mostly. We use lines because they're easy to manipulate, they're easy to change, we don't need to think about all the implications that come with color, color mixing and everything else, we can just quickly have a quick sketch idea, decide to change that, just erase a little piece and continue on. If we were doing color, if we were doing color or value, and we had different colored lights and everything else, then we would need to think about the mixing of the color, the mixing of the light, how that interacts, what the value would be like if the light source is close or far away. So a lot more things before you have a clear idea of what to do. So it's better to just work with line. They're used as an abstraction, meaning they're just for us to explore ideas. And they are a sort of an idea. They don't actually exist in the final painting. And again, there's a 2D and 3D mode of drawing. You can try to construct the things that you see, which empowers you to then construct your own objects. Or if you just like painting things that you can see like landscapes or whatever it is that you might be interested in just knowing enough perspective to know where your eye is on the horizon so basically where you stand in the environment you're in so if if you're doing houses or something else then you know where you stand so you can always keep your place there and you know how to scale things so nothing seems too big or too small have some people so just knowing enough will help you understand better what you're doing and you can also see everywhere the interaction of surfaces in light. So even if you don't want to do the 3D thing, these things will st still help you and empower you with more tools. And the more tools you have, the better your art will be. Next, we move on to light. So light makes geometry visible. We express light by using value and color. So the main tool for showing light is basically tonal gradations. Value is enough to communicate form and color adds an extra layer of meaning or alternatively we cannot use that extra layer of meaning in order to communicate something more directly materials in lighting affect the way that geometry looks a matte object will reflect light in one way so for instance if we take a look at these boxes they will not have specular highlights they will not reflect light very strongly if we look at metal now we can actually see how this metal, how this surface reflects light so much more and actually we can just compare this surface which is a matte surface there is no specular highlight there is no great big value difference in how it's rendered the cloth here would be another example of a matte surface there is not a lot of difference between the light and the dark parts of the object whereas over here we can not only see direct reflection of the color which is pretty much the color as it appears in reality, just a tiny bit darker. We also have the specular reflection and we have light, which is pretty much almost at the top of, of the value scale and we have a dark that's almost at the bottom. So materials affect the way that light works upon geometry. And then we also have the colored light factor, which basically means that colored light will also alter the color of objects. And we also have colored objects, the color of this yellow cube would change as it's being affected by the blue over here and it would also be changed on this side next to the red wall and it would be a different color which would probably be orange but we can see it from here. How we know that it's gonna be orange is we need to basically study different colored lights and how they interact with different colored materials. 
but again this would have to be in a different video because otherwise this video will never end now the final thing and what happens when you do spend the time to study the technical aspects that you might not want to study what happens when you're done with all these and when you've put your time in and have done a good job is that you unlock the idea based components behind art so everyone really when they want to become an artist everyone starts with an idea the problem is with most people at least people who are grown or older is that the ideas are normally much better than the expressive capabilities if you've never been trained before so that happened with me I thought I had good ideas but at that time I didn't really know that you needed training in art because I'd never been interested in art so I had good ideas or so I thought but I didn't have the technical skills to be able to unlock the idea based components of art so I would think about things that I would want to do but I wouldn't have the prerequisites the fundamentals to be able to get to here so this is where it starts and this is where you want to end up but you do have to go through this road and no one likes technical stuff no one likes engineering sort of part math sort of base things and boring formulaic whatever thinking about lines and thinking about cubes and who cares what happens to them when they go in space and all that stuff but if you do this for a long enough time which will not be more than a few years if you do that then for the rest of your life you can export these and this is really your reward this is your reward for doing these if you want to be an author if you want to be a writer or a poet you need to know words if you don't know words you won't be able to express your idea and this will only lead you to frustration if you want to be an artist then your words are geometry and light you need to find out as much about these as you possibly can and do the best possible job at these that you can in order to unlock these and be able to show other people what's inside you and what you think about when you're done with the technical aspects you can then explore composition which now we get into the arrangement of shapes and forms and colors of your viewpoint what's the best way to show the scene what would have the most impact what would be the most dynamic thing depending on what you're doing if you want to have a calm moody scene or if you want to have something that more of an action packed type of adventure you can also spend your time looking at design you can learn about anatomy you can then use that anatomy to generate your own creatures your own characters you can think about technology you can create your own worlds you can make up architecture buildings technology spaceships other planets anything galaxies aliens micro cosmic quantum physics weird stuff in the toilet or wherever else anything that you can think of you can explore these things when you're done with these things so this is where we start this is where we where we want to end up and the path to get there is through a lot of practice so I hope this was helpful I know it's not the whole thing I can't put it all in one video please let me know what you think about this please let me know what you're struggling with I'll try to help you with as much as I can and I hope to be able to finish and make more of the series of videos of fundamentals showing how to practice the different parts of the fundamentals that we talked about today thank you very much